Meter Haptics has recently emerged as an interesting alternative to traditional approaches that generally rely on gloves, handheld controllers, or even in robots. This means devices that you have to wear, hold, or grip, and that can only render a very specific sensation. Meter Haptics particularly handles very well these limitations, since it has the versatility to render various shapes and it does it without requiring the user to wear anything. However, the rendering volume that can be achieved by this device is considerably small, and so is the force that it can apply in the boundaries of this volume. To increase the usable area of ultrasonic arrays for rendering haptics, we suggest a multi-system approach centered on a commercially available cobot that dynamically drives the array in this space. My name is Steven Vija and I will be presenting the paper Extended Mid-Air Ultrasound Haptics for Virtual Reality in behalf of my co-authors. Here we report how to enable room-scale tactile interactions in virtual reality by fusing the spatial reachability of a serial cobot with the benefits of meter haptics. The core components of our system are a Kinova third-generation cobot to drive the ultrasonic array, an ultralip device with a leap motion camera to render haptics and track the hand position, and an HCC Vive Pro headset. It is important to highlight that due to the potential for the leap motion to lose track of the hand, we also employed a Vive tracker in the wrist for backup tracking. Using only this set of devices, we are able to increase the workspaces of ultrasonic meter haptics without requiring to increase the size of the arrays or the number of transducers. We created a plugin that connects the Cobot API to the game engine and allows us to operate the Cobot online. We also programmed and optimized positional and rotational proportional derivative controllers to respond to the user's movement in a secure manner. So we can follow the user's hands in the space and maintain the array at an optimal distance all the time. For hand tracking and guidance, we compute a vector from the robot space to the palm of the hand and use this vector to fix the ultrasound array distance at a value h of that can be set to remain an ideal rendering distance. While for the array rotation, we determine the local vector from the end effector to the palm of the hand and set the angles accordingly. The hand position was tracked using leap motion cameras and then converted to world coordinates using the robot's forward kinematics transformations. As a result, we were able to place all the elements into the same coordinate frame and then synchronize all the movements based on the scene elements. After putting together all the parts of the setup and control systems, we tested the dynamics and repeatability of the proposed method with a series of measurements to step stimulus and measure the responses in translation and rotation, which revealed that our system qualifies as an overdamped system. The manuscript provides additional information on this technical evaluation that we invite you all to check. To evaluate the feasibility of this approach, we conduct two studies. The first one was a psychophysical study in VR, comparing the perceptual impact of rendering ultrasonic haptics using dynamic arrays, which are the ones we are proposing, versus static arrays, which are the ones uh, in the state of the art. The second study was an evaluation of the overall experience in seven different scenarios. As the primary goal of this research was to determine the consequences of rendering haptics with a moving array, we considered the effects of every moving part of the setup. This is the user's hand, the haptic array, and the focal point. For this purpose, we conducted three experiments in which the moving elements were alternated. In the first experiment, the hand remained still while the focal point changed position. In the second one, we fixed the focal point and the user moved their hand. In the third one, the hand and the focal point were both moved. In each of the three experiments, we evaluated two conditions, static versus dynamic array. We use an adaptive psychometric design, more precisely an stage case with two up, one down design and a TUFC task. This means that individuals were exposed to ultrasound stimuli with varying intensities based on their detection rate. This detection was evaluated with a two alternative four choice question asked after the subjects fell to a stimuli. In this question, participants were required to identify which stimuli contained the ultrasonic feedback. 
To prevent bias, the order in which the stimuli and the conditions were present was randomized and a Latin square was used to counterbalance the order of the experiments. We recruited a total of 8 participants for this study and the experiment lasted approximately 60 minutes. We found that in the first experiment, which had a moving focal point and an stationary hand, the dynamic array had a slightly higher detection threshold and a higher sensitivity than the static array resulting in a smaller just noticeable difference for this experiment. This means that it was easier to detect a change in stimuli in this context. For the second experiment, where the focal point was fixed and the hand was moving, the results were reversed, with the static array showing a superior sensitivity and GND. In the third and final experiment, the absolute threshold and sensitivity were comparable, with the dynamic array performing marginally better. We conducted a set of Bayesian t-tests on the results of these three experiments and discovered that the performance of the two conditions do not differ substantially, indicating that the dynamic rendering of ultrasound meter feedback is perceptually equivalent to the static rendering, which makes the proposed system suitable for use in the real world. Which brings us to the second study in which we examine the overall experience in seven scenarios. Here we wanted to evaluate the contribution of the proposed system to the entire experience. So we construct seven scenarios that encompass a wide range of situations that demonstrate the versatility of the method. Specifically, we investigated scenarios including flat, curved, and complex surface, environmental haptics, moving objects, UIs, and tangible objects. For this study, we recruited a total of 12 people, half of whom identified as male and the other half as female. Every scenario was tested under two conditions, haptic feedback and not haptic feedback. Here, we also tried to avoid order effects by counterbalancing the conditions and scenarios using Latin square. After exposing the participants to each condition and scenario for one minute, we asked them questions about the user experience and haptic experience overall. Additionally, we suministered the IPQ questionnaire and recorded relevant feedback during and after the experiment. With this, we were able to observe the impact of the proposed system on the enjoyment, perceived realism, and strength of the feedback. We found significant differences in terms of enjoyment for the round surface, in terms of perceived realism for the environmental haptics, and across all the scenarios, for strength of the feedback. The subscales, sense of being there, spatial presence, and experienced realism. In conclusion, we present a solution to increase the workspace of meter ultrasound haptics to over 19 cubic meters. The proposed configuration can render a total volume of 19.98 cubic meters, including low quality volumes. And to the best of the author's knowledge, this is the largest rendering volume producing meter haptics to the moment surpassing previous efforts by a factor of 21 compared with Howard and colleagues, 13 times compared to Brees and colleagues, and almost 10 times compared to Suzuki and colleagues. The proposed system was evaluated on a technical, perceptual, and qualitative level. Our technical test simulated the system response in translation and rotation to ensure repeatability, sufficient speed to follow the hand, and user safety. We also investigated how rendering ultrasound meter haptics when the emitter is in motion affects the rendering quality. While the dynamic array tend to perform better in instances with moving objects, the results revealed that the perceptual characteristics of both configurations were comparable. This validation demonstrates that rendering quality is not compromised when the haptic array is put under stress, in this case rendering in motion, making it appropriate for the proposed configuration. In addition, we discovered that the technology permits users to experience meter haptics in a broader area than before. We demonstrated it in seven scenarios, each of which offer a unique opportunity for tactile investigation. These project building blocks are now available if you want to partially or completely replicate the findings described in, in this presentation. Also, if you have any questions, please email me or one of my co-authors. We'll be pleased to respond. Thanks you for your attention.